Hello, thank you for joining me today. Linda Lamp here. We've been reading A Course in Miracles, the main text, and today we're going to read chapter 25, section three. Chapter 25 is the justice of God, and section three is the savior from the dark. Is it not evident that what the body's eyes perceives fills you with fear? Perhaps you think that you find a hope of satisfaction there. Perhaps you fancy to attain some peace and satisfaction in the world as you perceive it. Yet it must be evident the outcome does not change. Despite your hopes and fancies, always does the despair result. And there is no exception, nor will there ever be. The only value the past can hold is that you learn it gave you no rewards, which you would want to keep. For only thus will you be willing to relinquish it and have it gone forever. Is it not strange that you should cherish still some hope of satisfaction from the world you see? In no respect at any time or place has anything but fear and guilt been your reward. How long is needed for you to realize the chance of change in this respect is hardly worth delaying change that might result in better outcome. For one thing is sure, the way you see and long have seen gives no support to base your future hopes and no suggestions of success at all. To place your hopes where no hope lies must make you hopeless. Yet this hopelessness, yet is this hopelessness your choice while you would seek for hope where none is ever found? Is it not also true that you have found some hope apart from this, some glimmering, inconsistent, wavering, yet dimly seen that hopelessness is warranted on grounds that are not in this world? And yet your hope that they may still be here prevent, prevents you still from giving up the hopelessness and unrewarding task you set yourself. Can it make sense to hold a fixed belief that there is a reason to uphold pursuit of what has always failed on the grounds that it will suddenly succeed and bring what has never been brought before? Its past has failed. Be glad that it is gone within your mind to darken what is there. Take not the form for content, for the form is but a means for content. And the frame is but a means to hold the picture up so that it can be seen. A frame that hides the picture has no purpose. It cannot be a frame if that is what you see. Without a picture, Without the picture is the frame without its meaning. Its purpose is to set the picture off, not itself. Who hangs an empty picture frame on a wall and stands before it deep in reverence as if a masterpiece were there to see? Yet if you see your brother as a body, it is but this you do. The masterpiece that God has set in this frame is all there to see. The body holds it for a while without obscuring it in any way, yet what God created create, created needs no frame. For what he has created, he supports and frames within himself. His masterpiece, he offers you to see. And you, and would you rather see the frame instead of this and see the picture not at all? The Holy Spirit is the frame God set around the part of him that you would see as separate. Yet its frame is joined to its creator, one with him and with his masterpiece. This is its purpose and you do not make the frame into the picture when you choose to see it in its place. The frame that God has given it but serves his purpose, not yours apart from his. It is your separate purpose that obscures the picture and cherishes the frame instead of it. Yet God has set his masterpiece within a frame that will endure forever when yours has crumbled into dust. But think you not the picture is destroyed in any way. What God creates is safe from all corruption, unchanged and perfect in eternity. 
Look at its loveliness and understand the mind that fought it, not in flesh and bones, but in a frame as lovely as itself. Its holiness lights up the sinlessness the frame of darkness hides and casts a veil of light across the picture's face, which but reflects the light that shines from it to its creator. Think not this face has ever darkened because you saw it in a frame of death. God kept it safe that you might look on it and see the holiness that he has given it. Within the darkness, see the savior from the dark and understand your brother as his father's mind shows him to you. He will step forth from darkness as you look on him and you will see the dark no more. The darkness touched him not, nor you who brought him forth for you to look upon. His sinlessness but pictures yours. His gentleness becomes your strength and both will gladly look upon and see the holiness that must be there because of what you looked upon in him. He is the frame in which your holiness is set and what God gave him must be given you. However much he overlooks the masterpiece in him and sees only a frame of darkness, it is still your only function to behold him what he sees not. And in this seeing is the vision that shared, is in the vision shared that looks on Christ instead of seeing death. How could the Lord of heaven not be glad if you appreciate his masterpiece? What could he do but offer thanks to you who's, who love his son as he does? Would he not make known to you his love if you but share his praise of what he loves? God cherishes creation as the perfect father that he is. And so his joy is made complete when any part of him joins in his praise to share his joy. This brother in his perfect gift to you. And he, and he is glad and thankful when you thank his perfect son for being what he is. And all he thanks, no, and all his thanks and gladness shine on you who could complete his joy along with him. And thus is yours completed. Not one ray of darkness can be seen by those who will make their father's happiness complete and theirs along with his. The gratitude of God himself is freely offered to everyone who shares his purpose. It is not his will to be alone and neither is it yours. Forgive your brother and you cannot separate yourself from him nor from his father. You need no forgiveness for the holy pure have never sinned. Give then what he has given you that you may see his son as one and thank your father as he thanks you. Nor believe that all his praise is given not to you. For what you give is his and giving it you learn to understand his gift to you. And give the Holy Spirit what he offers unto the Father and the Son alike. Nothing has power over you except his will and yours, which but extends his will. It is for this that you were created and your brother with you and at one with you. You and your brother are the same as God himself is one and not divided in his will. And you must have one purpose since he gave the same to both of you. His will is brought together as you join in will that you will be made complete by offering completion to your brother. See not in him the sinlessness he sees, but give him honor that you may esteem yourself and him. To God and your brother is given the power of salvation, that escape from darkness into light be yours to share, that you may, be, that you may see as one that never has been separate nor apart from God's love is given equally. Well, it's a lot of words and uh, it's not easily absorbed. 
But right at the end, we finally get to it, don't we? To you and your brother is given the power of salvation that escaped from darkness into light. Be yours to share that you may see as one what never has been separate nor apart from all God's love as given equally. So I don't think there's much more to say about this, but if you have questions or would like support in processing this, please feel free to reach out to me. You can uh, text me at 907-351-3003, or you can reach me through the websites, lindalamp.shop, lindalamp.com. And I will be here uh, hopefully next week for the uh, next installment. I apologize for missing the weekend of the 4th of July. Uh, so I hope everyone had a, a lovely holiday. Okay, thank you so much and we'll see you next week. Namaste and much love.